It's obvious that food and diet plays a big role in reflux. In fact, the research shows that if you're on the 21st century diet, fairly processed foods frequently, compared to a Mediterranean diet, you're at 230% increased risk of developing reflux. So this isn't about the tax, this is about developing the condition. So it's really saying that food plays a huge role, 2.3 times higher. That's very, very large. Then you've got the, the whole grains, it shows up. So you have whole grains, not the processed grains and so on. And there are studies which actually break it down into specific foods. And while I'm not going into much of that, it's worth noting that if you have fruit or veggies, each of those does about 20 to 26% reduction in the risk of reflux. So there is no way around Again, I'll reiterate, there is no magic bullet, there is no magic medication, there is no magic herb or spice, but what there is, is fruit and veggies, and they all reduce the risk dramatically. Beans reduce the risk by 22%. Egg, here's your egg eaters, 22%. Make sure it's cooked. If you're going to have oils, it's the good oils I'll mention later on. Fish, chicken, um, and mince. Now, I've got mince with a question mark there because mince is fine but make sure it's got no preservatives in it because the preservatives kill the microbiome and the disturbed microbiome as you'll see later can cause or contribute to reflux as well so if you have mince now why mince and not a big thick piece of steak for the very simple reason a big thick piece of steak is very hard to digest so if you can make it into very very small pieces and Take your time and consume it so it's easy to digest, fine, but meat becomes, red meat becomes very hard to digest. And then you've got certain foods like mel melatonin rich, and I've already mentioned melatonin to you and I'll mention it again in a moment, but cherries are a classic there. And uh, cherries are a great food. People know, people have actually commented that, you know, that when their kids eat cherries, they'll start to get drowsy and so on at night time. So great. But eating lots and lots of cherries, which, by the way, help with gout and other issues too, because of the whole high nutrient content. So just looking at that, there's a little bit about the food. Then we've got some simple strategies that we can do. And these are my two favorites. I've got a whole video on tube on vinegar and sodium bicarb, but I'll explain it with detail so that you're very clear what to do. And the first is five to 10 mil of vinegar, always diluted. So I have it in a, in, in a glass uh, of, of water. So I put a little bit in the bottom about that much, which is five to 10 mil. And then I dilute it three, four, five times. It doesn't matter. So you have that and I have that with a meal. For reflux, you have it with a meal. For other conditions, you can have it in between meals as well. But always diluted, okay? Or you can add it as a salad dressing or mix it in with the food. It doesn't matter but it's got lots of beneficial properties. But the main thing that it's doing in this case is it's actually acidifying, helping acidify the stomach. The pH of vinegar is around about two to 2.5. Um, it can change a little bit, but that is great for digesting foods, helping with digesting foods and increasing the acidity of the stomach just a little bit. Now. Uh, I've got another solution out there for you if you're moving around and you can't take that. You can, and if you don't like that, by the way, you can get that in capsules as well. I don't know how effective they are, but vinegar is great. Then you've got sodium bicarb. Now, a lot of people, when I put up my video, but sodium bicarb video, uh, by the way, has been the best in every channel I've put it up. Everyone says, wow. Um, so have a look at that one. But sodium bicarb, it's half a teaspoon in water one hour before food. Now I have it. Ready? Before food, not with food. I have it first thing in the morning. I actually mix it with some magnesium, and you'll, I'll talk about magnesium a little later, but I mix it with a bit of magnesium, and I have it at about, at the moment, about 5.30 in the morning, um, and then I won't be having my first meal till about 10 or 11, because I don't eat a big breakfast and so on. So my message is really simple. Have it well away from food when your stomach is completely empty. Now, why you have bicarb, because you've looked at part one of the reflux solution, you understand that your bicarbonate stores protect your, uh, uh, your esophageal lining, your stomach lining, your intestinal lining, and you have to have a good bicarbonate store to be able to inject sodium bicarbonate into your small intestine. And that sets off, as you will remember later from part one, the communication channel. So you need bicarbonate. And there are other ways of getting it, but this is the simplest and fastest one to do. And I recommend a half a teaspoon mixed in with some uh, water first thing in the morning. Now, here are the essentials of the uh, supplements and nutrients. And this is primarily, the first one is 
how to improve your stomach acid. Now you can get lots of supplements out there that have betaine, hydrochloric, pepsin, and usually something else, perhaps even ginger added into it because it helps with the digestion in the stomach. Now the pepsin is an enzyme to help digest proteins, which is the main one of the main digestive functions of the stomach. So it speeds up that process. And these are great because you can carry these in your pocket anywhere. Uh, and so when you're out dining, when you're, out, uh, you're at work or something, you can just pop a couple before. Always follow the instructions in terms of how many you need. But if you really find it hard to digest, you may need a couple of extra ones. And I take these with me whenever I go out, or I try to anyway, I try to remember. Um, so that's the first one. Now this one, this group here, of supplements is based on a study where they had 350 people and they compared, they split them up and they gave one group um, some drugs for uh, a reflux. They gave another group um, some uh, drugs for reflux and this combination here. And they gave another group just this combination from melatonin down there. And interestingly enough, over eight weeks, are you ready? That the supplement group outperformed the drug on its own without any doubt whatsoever, 100% improvement. So 100% said they, they no longer got reflux and or it was minor and was still getting better. And they had a follow-up period of about 10 months, which is huge in a scientific study. Normally the follow-up period, two to three months. So 10 months later, they still had an extremely low incidence recurrence. So here is the magic bullet. This is the magic bullet. And all it is melatonin. In this study, they did six milligrams. This was published back in 2006. Now, there have been follow-up studies, about 10 or 20 of those, which are all supporting exactly the same process. And, and if you understand what I've done in video, the first video, part one of this video, you'll understand why melatonin is so critical to it. And so six milligrams of melatonin, it helps with reflux, but other studies have also shown it helps with Barrett's esophagus, which is the inflammation and precancerous uh, cells in your esophagus. So anyone with long-term uh, reflux, probably concerned about this, or Barrett's esophagus, melatonin is fantastic because one of the things it does is help re-establish the bicarbonate stores, but it's a potent antioxidant, anti-inflammatory. It helps lower the risk of esophageal cancer and has 101 other benefits in there that I, I, I will put up on a separate video because I am a firm believer. And there are minor side effects of melatonin, including a little bit of sleepiness and um, uh, but often, often, and you, by the way, you take this at night time. You take this at night time, just before you go to sleep. But often, taking it for a little while, it alters the side effects. And I had some of those in the beginning, and I no longer get any of those side effects. And I take very large doses of melatonin. So there's a simple. But in that study, they also had a, had a tryptophan, five milligram. Now these you can get online. You can get them from health food stores anywhere outside Australia and in New Zealand. Uh, in Australia and New Zealand, you can go online and order um, from online sources to get the materials here. So we've got, we've got melatonin, tryptophan, five milligrams. Now tryptophan, why tryptophan is important? It's an amino acid, but it's converted into melatonin. So it, it is like eating a little piece of chicken, which is rich in tryptophan. And when you have that, it's converted into melatonin and stored away where it needs to be and the gut um, melatonin starts to work really well as a result. So tryptophan is a precursor to melatonin. Then in this study, they had B6, folic acid, B12, and methionine, which is an amino acid. And so this treatment here had 100% effectiveness. Now, if that hasn't convinced you, don't worry, because there are so many other things that you can add on that can make a big difference as well. Despite the effectiveness of all of the things I've already shown you, there are still things that you can do. Because remember, this is individual. There are things that you can do to add on to reduce the chances and, of course, improve your overall health and well-being. And these include things like the vitamin B complex. I've already shown you and I demonstrated just earlier how that linked with melatonin had so many benefits. Vitamin A, C and E have all been shown to have anti-reflux properties, but also lower the risk of damage caused by reflux because they're antioxidant, they're anti-inflammatory and have so many benefits. Then you've got your omega-3 fatty acids, fish oils, coconut oil, 
MCT, medium chain triglycerides. You can get all of these from your supermarket or health food store. And of course, add in olive oil. I've already mentioned that, but I want to add it in because it's so cheap, so effective, and make sure it's extra virgin olive oil because that's got the polyphenols in it that really make a difference with your gut microbiome and all digestive issues. Then we get on to probiotics and probiotics, hold on, aren't they for the large intestine? They're actually for the whole of the digestive system. And probiotics in the stomach can actually help with things like helicobacter and other infections in the stomach because you can have an imbalance of microorganisms, your microbiome, literally in your stomach. And so taking probiotics helps with that and it's been shown to lower the incidence and severity of reflux. So probiotics, the typical ones that they use, and these are the typical supplements you'll get, uh, the lactobacillus, bifidobacteria, and uh, a fungi called saccharomyces. And saccharomyces um, has lots and lots of, of benefits, but you can use these in combination, any combination. The studies just say, take some more probiotics along with whatever you're doing. Then we've got at the bottom, the addition of fiber. There is no doubt of the benefits of fiber, but uh, I also always list K-fiber. K-fiber did a study on reflux in kind of the worst case scenario, which was chemotherapy patients, and it showed success of it. And people think, oh, hold on, it's because it absorbs the acid. No, it's because the fiber, and in this case, the K-fiber went in and altered the gut microbiome, helped alter it all the way through. And it's not just fiber, it's a kind of complete gut food. So you've got that. Then you've got the other side, which you can add like herbs. And I'm a big fan of herbs and essential oils. And they're so simple to add into things and onto things that it's an essential component of what you should be doing. And the ones that stand out, now mastic gum is a it literally the sap of the pistachio tree and it's been used for thousands of years. In fact, I mean, um, Hippocrates or Hippocrates a couple of thousand years ago talks about the benefits of mastic gum for digestive issues. So they knew back then and modern day research now supports that. You can get that usually online, a few specialized health food stores and so on have it, but mastic gum is brilliant. Aloe vera, um, again, great for digestive and, and reflux. Licorice, black seed, one of my favorites. Nigella satvia, also so called black cumin seed and a few other different names out there, but absolutely brilliant when they're blended in and mixed in with some foods and other things. Rosemary, again, one of my favorites. Um, add, a, add some extra rosemary leaves. You see, one of the problems with 21st century eating, we've added the salt, and that's it. We've taken away all the herbs and the spices, and these herbs and spices have so many benefits. I should mention, by the way, that all of these and many of the other things I've already mentioned have anti-helicobacter properties, anti-candida properties, anti-parasite properties. So by adding these in and using them, not just the reflux, but you get the added gut, whole gut, whole body benefits of it. Curcumin, Obviously, turmeric, that's a, the active ingredient in turmeric and extremely potent and powerful and so many benefits around the gut, but also in lowering reflux. It's cousin ginger and slippery elm. Now, slippery elm is a little bit different in that it's a really soothing, uh, smoothing, quite hard to take because it kind of form, forms a bit of a gel, but it's brilliant if you've got any immediate gut issues, just taking it and helping soothe things in the gut, but shown up to benefit in reflux. All of these have been shown to benefit reflux. And then you get onto essential oils. Now these, if they're food grade ones, can actually be added to foods, just a couple of drops in foods, or and or added, literally rubbed in. And I'm a fan of essential oils. I use essential oils every single day. I, I probably have for the last uh, 48 years of my life or something. So the message is ginger is an essential oil, tarragon, peppermint, fennel, um, cinnamon, lemongrass, and my all time favorite has been patchouli. I started using that a long time ago and it's kind of that old hippie smell. But these are all essential oils. It can actually be rubbed on the digestive system because they actually help with the transit time. They help with the tone of the, uh, of the sphincters and they can help with transit time through the gut. Now, some essential oil companies also make their own proprietary brands to do with uh, digestion, improving digestion and so on. And they'll be a bit of a combination of these. Peppermint's probably the most common one used in those 
for improving digestion and reflux. So what we've got here is this, this really big picture. Now you don't have to do all of it, but what I'm suggesting is if you implement different stages of it and just keep adding on, because it's not just about reflux, it's about rebuilding your whole gut health and like I always talk about your whole overall health, eliminating chronic illnesses and so on. The message here is there is so much good information out there. Please subscribe below to my channel, share it with as many people as you can. And if you get the opportunity, have a look at some of my other videos on gut health and health. I'm continually putting more up depending on what you're asking for.